What's up guys, Manny from Motor Million, and this is the ultimate exhaust guide for the K63, K66, and the K67 BMWs. So that's 2020 or newer S1000RR, 2021 or newer M1000RR, 2022 or newer S1000 single R, and the 2020 or newer M1000 single R guys. And these model years that I'm talking about, I'm talking about the US model years, Europe has slightly different model years. I think they're one year behind in terms of the model years, but I'm not gonna go into that. And I'm gonna answer some of the frequently asked questions about the exhaust systems and some stuff that goes along with it for these bikes that I mentioned, because I think it's gonna be some good information out there. And if you still have any questions, you could always ask one of our team members. We'll be more than happy to answer to you guys. Let's get into it quick. First question first. Do I need a servo eliminator when I install an exhaust system on these bikes? When you install a slip-on on these bikes, you do not need a servo eliminator. When you install a header and mid-pipe combo on these bikes, you are going to need a servo eliminator if you live in Europe because that puts a hard coat on the bike, you get a check engine light, and that servo eliminator gets rid of that. But on the US and Canadian bikes, you get what we call a soft coat. The code will be present if you pull a code reader and pull the codes off your bike, but it does not reflect on your dash and it doesn't have any downsides as far as we know when you run those exhausts that I mentioned without a servo eliminator on these bikes. But I think it's still good practice if you guys don't have a tune on the bike to run a servo eliminator so that soft code is not present in the system either. Next question. What's the difference between Aero and Akrapovich header and midpipes because we offer those both in titanium and stainless steel? The quickest and easiest answer to that, and not the only answer, is the brand name. One is Aero, one is Acura, that's self-explanatory. But what's the difference between the Aero and the Acura other than just the brand name that's there? So one disclaimer guys, we curate the products that we sell. It's not about the price level being high or low. We pick the parts that we think are the best quality pieces that are out there for your motorcycles, and we stand behind what we sell. So that put aside, Akrapovich is Akrapovich, we all know it. It's one of the biggest exhaust brands, if not the biggest exhaust brand in the world that's out there right now. They do the highest amount of research and development for the products that they sell, and they make some great products. But what about Aero? Aero is kind of an unknown brand in the US. It's been in the US market for a very long time, but they've always been on the back foot a little bit just because I assume that there wasn't informational videos out there or they haven't done much marketing to put themselves as the brand name, that's a high level brand name that's out there. But let's go back into MotoGP. They're one of the only suppliers of MotoGP, but also it's a little unknown fact that's out there. Pagani cars, in case you don't know, they make hyper cars that are three, four, five million dollars. They use aero exhaust systems on there. Aero makes their exhaust systems. And when they produced their first hyper car, which was the Zonda, one of the craziest sounding cars out there, the centerpiece of that car was actually the exhaust system that they made for it because it was a nice blue titanium piece and you can see the muffler box on it. That was made by Aero for them and currently all of Pagani's lineup uses Aero exhaust systems. They have a nice big Aero logo because they're one of their technical partners. So that being said, that gives the credibility that we want from a manufacturer, but also when we test their products, they've always held up there with Akrapovich, so that's the difference. And one other difference in terms of the header and mid pipes are the routing of the exhaust pipes, right? So exhaust systems are not just a bunch of pipes that are bent. There's a lot of research and development that goes behind it. And if you run an Akrapovich, it's not like it's gonna be a different exit that comes out of the bike. It's just there's small changes between the Aero and the Akrapovich that they have their own ways that they've produced these exhaust systems from their experience to give you the best product that they can. And let's get to titanium systems in terms of the header and midpipe. The headers, be it titanium or stainless steel, between Aero and the Akrapovich, they have slight differences in terms of the routing. And what does that mean? It's not like the exhaust exits a different place. It's just that by the time that it gets to the muffler, 
It's just slightly different and that's by the experience that these both companies have to bring you the best product that they think is available for this bike. And in terms of the titanium header and mid pipes that are out there, the difference is the arrow is slightly lighter than the Akrapovich and both of them are titanium in that case, both will blue just as you see and that's what some people look out for. And that brings me to our next question, what is the difference between stainless and titanium? So the difference between the stainless and the titanium is that the titanium is a lighter material, the power doesn't change, and it also oxidizes blue, and the stainless steel is a slightly heavier material that they use, but again, as I mentioned, the power is exactly the same. It's not the material that determines the power that it makes, it's that routing that we talked about. And now that we answer the questions about the header and mid-pipe, the next big questions we get are the slip-ons. What are the differences between slip-ons and can you take a slip-on and put it on those headers and mid-pipes that I mentioned? The header and mid-pipe that we offer to you guys, be it the Akrapovich stainless, titanium, or the Aero stainless or the titanium, they all fit every single slip-on that we offer for the bikes that I mentioned. Then, what's the difference between the slip-ons? I think it's the looks and the sound. If you want a very loud exhaust system, I think I would just go with the SC Project slip-on, made it to one of those headers that I mentioned, and if you want something that's very different that you're not gonna see out there, Aero makes some great slip-ons and they just came out with their pro race models that have the black titanium mufflers. The mufflers are a little larger than what we are used to, but they look great. And if you want something different and a little quieter tone that, than that SC project, I will go with the Aero. And if you want to stick to the Akrapovich name brand, because I think most people buy the Akrapovich because there's a big name brand behind it, Akrapovich gives a variety of options that we have, be it the GP Shorty, which is their loudest one that's out there. It's not as loud as the SC project in terms of idling. We actually tested it with a decibel meter. At, at idle, that GP slip-on from Akrapovich is actually quieter than the SC project, but wide open throttle, they're pretty close. So if you want that subtle quietness, but want that short exhaust system, that GP Shorty works great. But Akrapovich has the full length carbon and the mid length carbon cans that we all love. And that full length carbon is the most quiet exhaust system that we have in terms of a slip on that you can make to those headers. And that mid length carbon is a great looking exhaust with that titanium tip in the back, but it's also in that sweet spot between having a loud exhaust system and a quiet exhaust system. So that's your choice to make. And the next question we get is, can I put my stock muffler? And if your bike comes with this Akrapovich muffler that's on it, because it's an option on the S1000Rs, M1000Rs, then the double Rs in terms of the S and M, you could for sure mate these up to Akrapovich or Aero header and mid pipes to make it a full system. And also if you have the, just the regular stock muffler, those header and mid pipe combos that I mentioned will work on it. It technically becomes a full system without changing the muffler. And what are you accomplishing? You're getting rid of all the restrictions that are in the exhaust system by running those header and mid pipes. Now that we have the slip-ons covered, let's talk about the full exhaust systems. We offer Aero, Akrapovich, and SC Project full exhaust systems. And my biggest disclaimer for that subject is that if you buy a full exhaust system, which is the Akrapovich Evolution or the Racing Lines, or any of the Aero or the SC Project full exhaust systems, you cannot change the muffler on them. So you can't grab this muffler and put it on any of those full exhaust systems that I mentioned. It does not work. The routing of the exhaust systems are so different that you can't do it. And what are the reasons behind it? Does one make more power than the other? The power differences are ever so slight that I don't think it matters. At that point, we go back to the question of what's the sound that you want and what's the look that you want. And if you just want to get a full exhaust system and be over with it and you don't want to mix and match stuff. And that covers the full exhaust system question, guys. And now that all the hardware is set aside, let's talk about software. And what do I mean by software? I mean the flashes that are out there. And do you need to change the software on the bike? Do you need to tune the bike when you put an exhaust system? We built the Motor Million brand name by giving you guys the relevant information that you guys need and also being overly honest with what we offer to you guys. And my honest opinion is, do you need a tune? No, you don't. Your bike is not gonna put a check engine light. As I mentioned, you could run a servo buddy. And over the years, I have yet to see a bike being damaged by running an exhaust system without a tune on the bike. But 
I don't recommend running without a tune. Why? Because these bikes are so heavily restricted that that stage one flash from brand tuning does wonders. It's the biggest ever single difference you'll have on your bike in terms of power that you could do. And it's so simple with a handheld they send. I think it's a must for all of these bikes that are out there. But do you have to do it? You don't have to do it. And also one subject that it hasn't really been talked about is that stage one flash. Even if you run the stock exhaust on your bike, it changes the way that this flapper valve works on your bike. And that way the bike instantly gets louder. It's not as loud as running a slip-on or it's not as loud as running a full exhaust system, but there is a notable difference that's out there. But I think if you're getting an exhaust system for your bike, I would really recommend the stage one flash. And let's get to the stage flashes, right? The stage one and stage two. What's the difference between the stage one and the stage two? So stage one is the stage one flash that gets rid of some of the restrictions on your bike and it's 50 state carb legal. And stage two is the most optimized tune that they have. And my honest opinion to that is that if you're just riding on the street, if you're not racing for money or doing anything competitive, the stage one is the best option that's out there. And you don't have to do any of the extended mods like the flapper deletes or the IAT relocations to run the stage one. So the bike is easily returnable to stock with just that handheld. Stage two gives you the option of running those additional mods, which are further hardware changes. So if you ever want to turn the bike back to stock, some of the stuff requires to take off quite a bit of stuff off the bike. And that also is the reversibility that's different between stage one and stage two. But if you're somebody who wants the optimum power and you're competitive and you're racing for money or anything like that, obviously stage two is the way to go. One other hardware question that's there with the flashes is do I get a filter? Regardless of your tune that you run, I think it makes sense to get a filter. We have two filter options. We have the PO8 and the PO8 F1 filter, which is the race filter. The PO8 being the performance filter. When you change the exhaust system on your bike, you are effectively getting the bike to exhaust those gases, right? The, the gases leave the bike more efficiently. And what are those gases come from? It comes from the combustion that's happening within the engine and the combustion, all the air and the gases come through the air that is inlet into the bike. So in that way, if you're doing an exhaust on the bike, I would just recommend running a PO8 performance filter on the bike. Aside from the performance gains, I think that one of the main things that I like is that that filter is a lifetime filter. What do I mean by that? The bikes come with a paper filter that you have to throw out or other brands make filters that you got to clean and wash and do all these things. But the sprint filters, you simply just remove them off the bike when you're doing an oil change and take some compressed air, clean it out. It'll be as good as new. You don't have to oil it. You don't have to wash it. Put it back and it's going to be good as new. And as I said, if you take proper care of it, it's going to last the lifetime of your bike and as we all know, we don't keep these for a very long time and that's also an added benefit to it. But just like the difference between stage one and stage two, if you want the optimum power delivery, I would opt out for the race filter. The race filters, depending on where you live, if you don't live in a place that has very, very high pollen, meaning that if you go out one day and everywhere is just yellow with pollen, I would stick to the performance filter. But if you don't have that problem and you want the optimum power, you could get that PO8 F1 racing filter and that'll be the most optimal option that's out there. If you guys still have any questions regarding what we talked about, you could put them in the comments below or you could reach out to one of the Motor Million team members via email or phone and they'll give you the most appropriate answer to your questions. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Until next time guys, have a good one.